After finding out that Glockman has betrayed her in the worst way, Lyle is furious and ready to handle him fatally. But unfortunately for her, Glockman feels he has worked too hard to obtain her and refuses to let them in. He and Lyle must work together to deal with the common enemy, and they also have to face the repercussions of their rekindling, especially once a traitor in their circle reveals their murderous secret. Will they be able to overcome the odds stacked against them, or will the guilt of disloyalty be being immoral and envious outsiders be the death of their relationship. In the final installment, the other sisters return with one fighting hard to prove she isn't that same selfish and conniving beast she once was, and the other simply trying to keep her head above water and hope that prisons won't be her new home. The oldest Joey is finally free and about to face some hard truths. All four sisters will learn some hard lessons in love and find out who truly cares and who truly means them no good hello my beautiful people and welcome back to the show we are here for part three of boss chicks by siobhan latrice uh i'm gonna do it differently this time so instead of starting with lala glockman i'll leave them for last i'm gonna start with joey because in this story you know she's finally out of jail but her whole time she was in jail like she was going too bad for Dennis like calling Lyle calling Troy like I need my money you know he needs that money to maintain our lifestyle and I understood Lyle and Troy it's just like that nigga can't get no money like he was supposed to be working for Glockman making money that way but he didn't want to do that like Dennis was lazy and just looking to live off of Joey's money So even when she gets out of jail, Dennis isn't there to pick her up. It's the cousin. Uh, Dennis has a cousin, Joaquin. So Joaquin is there to pick her up. He takes her home. They're chilling and on the way home, that's when she finds out that uh, Joaquin is going to be staying with them for a while until he can get on his feet. And uh, he's from Detroit. So they're sitting there talking you know, and she has no idea what Dennis is. And he just randomly shows up talking about, uh, I got you later, babe. Today was a busy day. How was today a busy day, nigga? You ain't got no fucking job. So what was you doing? But she accepts it. And, you know, she, she's been accepting this behavior from him. Cause I think I mentioned in the last episode, like he don't accept her calls or not as often like he wouldn't put no money on her books it's like nigga you out spending the money that i'm getting as my portion of being an owner of the club but you can't put no money on my books you won't come see me like i i'm i was so confused as to why she was going to bat for this man even if he is your husband like first of all you took the charge for him he can't come see you he can't put no money like even if you don't show up because it's like I'm trying to, I try to avoid jail. So why would I come down to a jail and see you? Like, I would almost let that pass, but you can't put no money on my books. You won't answer the phone. Like, if anything, if I agreed to take a charge for you, which I'm never doing, I'm never doing. But if I did, anytime I feel like calling, you better barely let it ring once before you picking up that phone and answer my motherfucking call. But, you know, it's, whatever he's not lovey-dovey he's not really giving her no attention even with her being home it's like even the way he came in the door like she didn't just get out of jail like you're not hugging her like no type of appreciation of what she sacrificed for them in any type of way he's just worried about joey talking to lyle for lyle to talk to glockman to get him hired and before she got out of jail she called Lyle on the phone and Lyle had the conversation with Glockman and Glockman said, I don't do rehires. Like really the only reason why that man is breathing is because of Lyle and the fact that he's married to Lyle's sister. So it's just like, if anything, you need to be thanking me that the fact that the man is still alive. Cause if I wanted to, I could tell my man, man, fuck him, kill him. And you'll just be a grieving widow. But you know, as as the story's going on, you know, she's realizing 
that Dennis really ain't shit. And her and Joaquin are going closer. Now, he's always had a little crush on her flirting here and there. And she actually told Dennis, like, back in the day that Joaquin had touched her ass. And they got into a fight about it. And uh, But they had smoothed it over and got back cool. But now, you know, she's spending more time with the cousin than her own husband because he's never around or he's, he's off somewhere pouting. Now, uh, the girl's aunt Connie, she threw Joey like a welcome home party. So one night when they're there, she has a conversation, like she's talking to her sisters while Dennis is off, like sitting on the couch, not talking to anybody just being real antisocial and one of the things that she held on to as to why she loved him so much is it's a known fact that her family doesn't like him so anything they came to her with she would say that they're lying just because they don't like them and as her sister I think I would have like backed off from the relationship like until she either stopped talking to him or, you know, like, they got, they broken up. Because it's like, I'm your sister. I'm trying to look out for you. I wouldn't try to sabotage your life that much to where I'm lying on the nigga to try to get y'all to break up. And if you feel that way about me, then it's obvious that you and I don't need to speak. Because it ain't even just about him. It's the fact that you think that I would do some shit like that to you as my sister. But, you know, they do this back and forth thing. And then at the party... After she's done talking to Lyle, that's when he decides to get up off the couch and is like, you know, what did she say? And she's like, you know, who you talking about? And he's like, Lyle, what did she say? And she says, you know, I haven't even had the chance to to talk to her yet. And so he was like, so what the fuck was y'all talking about over there for so long? And getting real loud, like, he done grabbed her by her arms. And she, you know, basically everybody is looking at them. And she's, like, kind of embarrassed because it would be hard to believe that he's not abusive in private if he's willing to yell and grab on her like that in public. So, Joaquin comes over and is like, man, you need to chill out. And then his good attitude with him, like, you need to mind your business. This my bitch. And Joey's like, first of all, I'm not no bitch. So, you need to uh, hold off on that and talking about me like that. And so, Dennis pushes Joaquin because again he's trying to get him to calm down like dude you know they could call the police on you like you go to jail you need to relax but when he pushes him Joaquin like punches him they start fighting all around the kitchen then here come Lyle with her gun click click stop all that fighting in my auntie house y'all need to get the fuck out so Dennis like a little bitch runs out into the car now of course all three of them you know they rode together so uh, he jumps in the car and takes off, leaving them stranded. So Joaquin ordered an Uber, and she decided to go with him because she was too embarrassed to turn around and face her family, even though they were telling her, you know, like, come on back in the house, fuck him, forget that nigga, just come back in the house. But it was embarrassing, so I couldn't understand. It's like, I'm not... She didn't even turn around, so basically she kept her back to them, and they walked up to go get the uber and you know that just kind of cemented her relationship with dennis it's just like fuck him so as i said her and joaquin you know they're growing closer and joey decides to hire a pi to follow dennis because it's just like nigga you not working but you constantly gone so what are you doing so come to find out he was she know her all the time which is like girl duh um and she follows him to this apartment where she finds him naked with a girl. And that gives her the motivation to file for divorce. And then her and Joaquin start messing around. Now, Joaquin actually takes her on a date, you know, doing all the things that her husband should be doing. And she tells him, you know, Dennis has never done anything like this for me before. And Joaquin is like, see, he needs his ass whooped. And they go home that night and have sex. Now, she changed the locks. Uh, what is it? No, they have key fobs to their places. Now, she changed that, but because she didn't take Dennis' name off of the list, he just got a new one and came into the apartment like as they were having sex. But Joaquin pulled his gun out because Dennis was like walking up to him trying to fight him. 
and he put out his gun and he said hold on ain't no way i'm fighting another man while my dick and ass is out so back your ass up and we'll just talk about this another day because ain't no way i'm finna do this with you while i'm standing here naked which i completely understood it's like why would you even come towards me trying to fight me and i'm naked like nigga back your ass up so uh the way their story ends joey and Joaquin, like, they have to set up Dennis to kill him. Because she tells him, you know, the only way this is going to work between us is if we get rid of him. So he comes by the apartment one night thinking that he and Joey are about to rekindle their relationship. But she goes into the kitchen to, quote unquote, get the food out of the oven. And when she comes back into the living room, he has his head, like, laid over the back of the couch with a hole in it. And so, of course, she has to play the grieving wife. And saying that somebody came into the apartment and killed her husband and left out and she didn't see anything. And that's it for them. Next, we have Troy, August, and Lawrence. So, Troy started to bring Darling around August so they can get to know each other now. At first, she was just introducing August as her friend because baby girl knows Lawrence as her father. So, she just wanted to bring darling around get her comfortable with being around august before they have that tough conversation i'm trying to explain to a little girl that this is her actual father so but during that time uh troy sets up a payment plan with lawrence and when he signs the contract and get everything you know, they get all that situated. She breaks up with him and he was thinking like, okay, now that that's out the way, they were just going to go back to being a couple and actually work on being a family. And she was like, no, nigga, you had me held hostage in this situation because I don't want you to have control over the company that I have with my sister. So you know that's all it was and he was like i can call my lawyer and get it reversed and tell her i changed my mind and Troy was like no you can't why do you think i waited until the contracts were signed it's official you can't just change your mind like that um and so he filed for full custody he's like there's no way that you're just gonna take my daughter and go be with that hoodlum and Troy tells him, like, you know, you're not going to have full custody of my daughter. She's still my daughter. There's no reason for you to think that you could just have her. So when they go to court, um, the judge is like, this is a waste of time. You have nothing but quote unquote accusations because he claims that she's like running around with thugs, that her sister, like Joey, went to jail and that Lyle is known to carry around guns and just and uh bryce is on her way to jail for murder so it's just like look at the people she's around and the judge is like but still what does that have to do with her being a bad mother as you claim it's like that has nothing to do with her daughter so all of y'all just wasted my time and you're not getting full custody and so after that happened august and troy sat down with darling and told her you know this is your actual daddy and she's a little girl so she doesn't fully comprehend the conversation and she gets upset she starts yelling and um i forgot if i mentioned it in the last episode or not but she also wasn't too happy with august because august had punched lawrence in the face and darling was there so she was scared of him for a little bit because she was like, you're the man that hit my daddy. And so that's when they were doing like, this is this is my friend thing. And she was like, no, I don't want to talk to him. He's the one that hit my daddy. And the way they got quote unquote cool, she was like, you promise not to hit my daddy anymore? And he's like, yeah, sure, I promise. So then when they have the conversation of this is actually your daddy, she's like, no, no, no way. <clears throat> and so... Also, before I forgot this, before the uh, custody hearing, Lawrence would tell her, you know, if anything happens to me, I have somebody that is going to call 911, you know, and and tell them that you had something to do with my disappearance. So I better make it to call them every day or, you know, it's curtains for you. 
And she had no idea who that person was until she hired a private investigator and found out that Lawrence actually has a sister named Lauren. So after the custody hearing and he was refused full custody, the sister uh, was unfortunately killed by a stray bullet and they pulled him into the warehouse that they used to kill people. And, you know, he's shot in the leg before he's forced to sign over his rights to Darling. And as soon as he signed over his rights, he's killed. So Troy and August get their happily ever after with their daughter. And at first, you know, of course, August was egging her. It's like, there's no way I could be with you. You so grimy. You so childish. Like, I want nothing to do with you. But he decides that he wants to try again and that he has real feelings for her. But they have to take it slow because he doesn't completely trust her all the way. And she agrees. But he can see that she's you know, maturing and growing into a different person and it's not the selfish person that she used to be. Bryce and Keon. Where do we start? So Bryce and Keon, I believe they were still like communicating with each other. Well, no. It was a miscommunication because, you know, Bryce heavily told Bryce first that she was pregnant and then you know Bryce was upset with Keon because he goes over to profess his love for her like I really want to try one more time and she is like glaring this nigga down and he's like you know what's the problem and she tells him you know how can you say you love me and you want to be with me when you have another baby on the way and so he goes home to heavenly and try to get her to take a pregnancy test Cause it's like, how are you out telling people that you're pregnant, but you didn't even tell me or let me know first. And so she's like, no, it's too early to take a pregnancy test. Um, because it'll come back positive when it really might be negative. So she's like, no, give me a few weeks and then I'll take one. And he's, you know, he's a man, so he doesn't really, like, completely understand, but he's looking at her sideways, and it's like, okay, but just know I'm not fucking with you like that no more, and, okay, so I want to mention this. I, I'm a part of Siobhan's uh, reading group page on Facebook, where, you know, we come together and discuss the books and stuff like that. Now, uh, I made a post saying I was reading uh, part two. It was a uh, last episode, reading book two. And I felt like Keon violated Heavenly, like, on the regular. And I got a lot of comments, like, basically saying she got what she deserved. And it was her own fault and da 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 And while I agree... I think I should have, I should have worded it better. Like speaking for myself, I was only speaking on how he spoke to her now. And a lot of these books, we know that these niggas talk to women crazy, but it's just the way Keon constantly said one thing, then did another, because if you don't want to be with her and you don't like her like that, then why are you still sleeping with her? And you already know, cause that's my thing. It's like, uh, they've had the conversation of him not wanting to be with her but he has sex with her and then it's like you'll have sex with her and then be like you know i'm I'm not with you like that i don't like that whatever whatever but while having that conversation and letting her know that you also know how she feels about you so he's playing with her emotions because a lot of the conversation was he told her that he didn't want to be with her. Yes, he said that, but then he would run back and sleep with her. So to somebody who has feelings with you and is or thinks that they're in love with you, it's like, oh, he says that, but look at where he is. Look at what he's doing with me. Like, look at how we act like a family. Even if she does like intrude and invite herself to the outings, he's still doing it though. So it's just like, you have to say what you mean and then follow that up with action because I don't know why people like, okay, 
what am I trying to say? Sex can be casual because people do it all the time. But in this situation, there there's no scenario with giving the information that you're giving about Heavenly and about Keon where Heavenly would take them having sex as just a casual thing and not be attached to it any type of way. So there's no way where she thought him having sex with her even though she initiated it and would throw herself at him the fact that he always took the bait she would see that as look i can bring him into me and i can make him want to be with me now we know she grabbed me we know she did some backward shit that makes her trifling and all that shit i never said that was not the case but my thing was the things that he said to her and then followed up by what he did there's no way that she wouldn't take that as oh this he feels something for me he's just talking crazy to make himself feel better you know like come on now but you know that was the thing and I felt like people thought that I was trying to take up for heavily and I wasn't it's just like and I think people don't understand because I said in the post as well because I commented under somebody else's and I was like he told her on multiple occasions that he regretted their baby like words mean things they have meaning so and uh one lady was like he regretted who he had his son with he never regretted his son and I'm just like what part of if he did have that child with heavenly that would not be his like it would not be the same like y'all trying to separate the baby from the mother it would not be the same that would come that would be a completely different child so with you saying you regret having this baby with this woman you regret this baby those words are not hard to understand and you cannot separate the two but you know and then i was like i also kind of felt the way because i feel like if you're not there to completely say like oh i love this from start to finish and we just hate the quote-unquote antagonizers then you're kind of questioning the work and you're not like on the side and then (laughs) i don't know i felt like uh miss ma'am was trying to get me kicked out the group too because uh she commented so you're reading this book on your podcast for free i'm like ma'am Are you trying to not only get me kicked out the group, but sued? Because that would be me trying to profit off her work with, like, no money going towards her or anything like that. And I was just like, no. When I said reread, I mean, like, taking notes. And uh, then she came back like, oh, because I would have listened. I said, oh, no, y'all trying to get me hemmed up in here. And that's why I I don't comment too much. I just sit back and, you know, read. Because I was like, you... I love Siobhan. She's like one of my favorite authors. And I feel like you, y'all you trying to uh, get me kicked out. But anyway. Uh, so with that. It's like awkward between them for a minute. Bryce and Ke- uh, Keon. I mean. But then it's like they have a conversation again. And she lets them know like you know. I might be going to jail for murder. So we can kick it this one last time and let that be that but then they continue to see each other and she has a a conversation with him about how did heavenly tell you that she was pregnant and the first thing that comes to his mind is please don't tell me you pregnant uh for that nigga and i was like the uh, she's like no like she's offended but my first thing would have been like and nigga if i was what what you gonna do about it like what is what's the issue but um she's like no i just want to know how did heavenly tell you and so he's like she sent me a picture of a positive pregnancy test and so bryce is like yeah that's how she told me that she was pregnant by you again and so as soon as she said that, he like, oh, but when I tried to get... So what's clicking for him? He shoots up out of there. He's like, I got to go. She's like, what? Why? I thought we was having a nice conversation. He's like, man, I'll talk to you later. This nigga flies home. Bursts into her room like, get your ass up. How you show Bryce a pregnancy test, but when I asked you to take a test, you acted like it was the end of the world and you done already took one. And so he kind of analyzed the picture already. And she's like... 
She tells him, I did that because she needed to know because you, me, and this new baby need to work on being a family. He's like, so get up and take a pregnancy test. And she's like, fine, I will. <clears throat> Excuse me. But then she gets behind the door in the bathroom and it's like, okay, I lied. Because he's looking at the picture. He like, these floors on this picture are from your old apartment. This is an old ass picture. So she tells him, like, fine, I cropped out, like, the information from the old one and uh, showed it to her just so she could leave you alone. And he tries to burst into the bathroom, but she don't lock the door. He's like, open the door. She's like, no, you're going to kill me. So leave and I won't call the police. So after that... You know, he's completely done with her, but she's making the situation at home a mess. Like, she keeps trying to proposition him with sex, just trying to work her way into his life and be a family. And he's not going for it. So she's constantly yelling in the house, whatever, whatever. And he's telling his best friend, like, man, I can't take too much more of this because, you know, she's just making it miserable for me. And so he tells him, you know, go talk to your PO. So he tries she shuts him down immediately like no i let you change the first time you're not changing again even though he tried to explain like the situation is not good for me she ain't trying to hear it she don't care so he's continuing to live in these conditions until it just gets unbearable so they have the conversation again uh with his best friend and i believe it was either his best friend or august Somebody told him, like, you know, go over your PO's head and talk to her boss and, you know, have evidence to show that your living situation is hostile and you need to get out of there. And that's exactly what he does. And, like, there's recordings of her yelling, threatening him and all that type of stuff. So, uh, the soup I'm gonna call him the supervisor because I forgot his name. He says, like, that's a terrible situation you're in, so uh, we're going to grant you uh, to move one more time, and you have two weeks to give us the information for the new address, or everything's going to revert back to your current address, and we know you don't want that. He was like, you are right, and I'm going to do that and get it done. Now, while he's working on that, him and Bryce are also working on their relationship. Now... You know, they he wants to get with her, like be with her, but she's kind of holding him at arm's length. Like, I just told you there's a possibility that I could be going to jail for a long time, and I really don't want to get you wrapped up in that, and I'm not going to do that to you. So, you know, this can only be like basically us having sex or us kicking it and let that be that. He's like, Man, I don't care about that, ain't no way I'm gonna let you go to jail and so when he finds out that it was actually jake's idea to do the private parties and that it was jake that uh killed the rapper who was responsible for raping uh what's her name for raping jenna he's like so you on the hook for something that this nigga did and you think i'm just gonna let that fly and let that be what it is and she's like no i didn't tell you because i didn't want you to get involved like you know it's my problem my lawyer says that i can get off like i'm not gonna go to jail so it's just not your problem but it is a possibility so that's why she doesn't want to get close because it's like even though everybody knows that she's innocent innocent people go to jail all the time so it's just like i cannot hold on to the possibility that I might not go to jail. So lo and behold, he goes back to the old girl apartments because it's like, man, where she stay at, people outside all the time. So somebody saw something. So come to find out, after Bryce left from talking to her, uh, the rapper's bodyguard showed up to her house And he was the last person that left her house. So the bodyguard is actually the one who killed her, basically on word of the rapper. And now Jake done killed the rapper, so you can't even get that story. But because that evidence did come forward, you know, her case is looking real good and the charges were dropped. So basically she's not going to jail. So later on, uh... 
Bryce has his son help him like set up a proposal to Bryce. And oh, this is before she found out the information that she was let off the hook. But right before then, he proposes to her and she says yes. And then like they're working on becoming a little family together. Um, but later on, Jake comes up to her after the charges have been dropped and says, you know, I want to be with you. Uh, you know, I'm here for you. Even if you would have went to jail, I would have stuck by you. And she's like, you lying. You only saying that now because you know that I'm not going. And he's like, no, not really. I really want to be with you. And she's like, whatever. But anyway, while they're talking, somebody walks up on him and is like, Jake, he's like, who want to know? They run down his full name, his birthday, who his parents are. And it's like, you know, you killed the rapper. Because I, for I forgot his name. But you killed him. And uh, Tony Wacko, like he was signed to Wacko. And he just paid him like $1.2 million. And he didn't get a chance to recoup his money. So Jake is trying to deny it. Like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. That must be another Jake, but I ain't kill nobody. And I ain't got nothing to do with that. So the man like, all right, bet. And he walks around the corner and it seems like as if he left. But next thing you know, as Bryce and Jake are still talking, this man has explode. So she goes home to Keon like, and running down the story to him. And of course, the only thing this nigga can focus on, like, why you was talking to the nigga? And at first, so she's like, so you set him up? Keon, like, whoa, 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 I ain't set nobody up. I just provided some information to let them know that he the nigga who did it. And what happened after that is what it was. I didn't expect the shit to happen in front of you. So I'm sorry that you had to see that. So after he proposed and then he went and got permission to move he goes to heavenly's place you know to pack up his shit and she's upset she's like uh i hope you don't think that you're gonna be standing night at that bitch house and then coming over here like that's a violation of your parole and i will be letting them know and he's basically like i don't care because i'm leaving anyway like i got permission to move and as soon as he says you went down there and snitched and he like whatever to get away from you that's you was just threatening me with the exact same thing so the fact that i turned around and did it now you trying to act like you mad and he was like i'm not sitting i just whatever you call it whatever you want as long as you know i'm no longer staying here so it doesn't even matter and so she tells him i hope you don't think that y'all finna be playing house with my baby because i'm gonna make your life a living hell da, 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 da. and he's like well if i have to no, he says, we have a custody agreement in place. Like, you cannot keep him from me. And she's like, uh, well, you're going to have to take me to court. And you know that's going to be a while. So you're not going to see your son for the next four or five months. And this is what I was saying when I was like, I hope people don't think that I was on her side. Because I see how trifling Heavenly is. But before that, all the shit that he was talking to her was crazy. Like, two things could be true at once. You know what I mean? But anyway, he goes back to the house and he's upset. And when he tell Bryce what happened, Bryce jump up. She's like, man, I've been waiting to beat that whole ass, so let's go. So they go back to uh, Heavenly's place. And Bryce is like, bitch, it's finna be this, this, and this. So tell me you understand. And if you don't, then I'll beat your ass. So Heavenly, for somebody who don't fight and told Keon that growing up, she never really had to fight. Bitch gonna say, I don't understand. So she got her ass whooped until she did understand. And uh, Bryce told her, you know, well, you you stay here, fix yourself up. We gonna go pick up the baby from daycare and we'll bring him back around, you know, seven o'clock. That's cool. And she's like, yeah, yeah, that that's fine. And then Bryce, like before they hit the door, she's like, oh, that ass whooping? Also means don't try to be suggestive with my fiance at all. Because if I can't beat your ass, I'm going to pay somebody else to beat your ass. And we just going to continue this cycle all day. Because she was like, you know, even after this ass whooping, if you decide that you want to uh, file restraining orders and try to get people arrested, I'll just have somebody else do it. So basically, you're going to walk out your door every day to an ass whooping. So what you want to do? So she finally got some sense about herself. 
And you know, like, I'm going to leave these motherfuckers alone and let them be. Thank you. Okay, so to top this whole thing off, we're going to go with our main couple, Lyle and Glockman. So picking up where part two ended is with Lyle calling Glockman while he pulling up to his baby mama house and seeing Toddy come out of the house. So Toddy and Kemp, like they try to lie, talking about, you know, I was just coming to check on her. And Glockman is like, man, I don't believe that shit. And he ready to shoot him right there because he like, I know some foul shit coming on because what is going on? Because what the fuck are you doing at my baby mama house? But it's broad day out and Tyler uses that to his advantage. He's like, man, people are watching you all around. You can't shoot me out in broad daylight. And so that's the one thing that helps him get away. And after that, he goes into hiding. But Glockman, like, he won't stop looking at Kelby and asking her, like, why was he here? Like, nothing y'all say would make sense as to him being at your house. And so we get a chapter from Toddy explaining, like, he was the one who showed up at Kelby's house the day that Glockman got arrested and told her that he was looking at some years and consoled her and that one thing led to another, and that's how they ended up having sex, and he is actually the father of Kelby's baby girl that she's been putting off on uh, John. And so, and then also, he feels justified in it, because one night at the club, he actually saw Kelby first, but he felt like he needed a wingman, so he brought Glockman with him, and with Glockman being there, Kelby went from looking at him to looking at Glockman. And because basically the bitch shows up, Glockman's like, he reciprocated her energy. Now, if anything, why you couldn't go over there and talk to her yourself? Because it didn't, I don't think she said if she was there with friends or not, like you didn't need a wink, man. Just go over there and talk to the girl. But the fact that you brought your better looking friend, probably got more swag than you, a better demeanor like she chose be mad at her why you mad at your own best friend and then the fact that the reason uh what they they were working for somebody else but uh glockman killed him and basically like took over right so the fact that glockman took over and was like moving up toddy didn't like it because he felt like glockman was trying to use him as an employee or would talk to him as an employee talk down on him and he's like you know i'm a grown man i don't uh follow orders from nobody but glockman basically quote unquote uh signed his paycheck because he was in charge so if you didn't follow what he said you wasn't gonna be eating out of them streets anyway so it's like so once again it's like <sighs> You thinking you friends with somebody and they low key trying to plot your demise. So after that, you know they're not friends. So he goes into hide and and Glockman can't find him for nothing. He even goes to Siren trying to sniff him out, but she don't know nothing because he didn't tell her nothing. And so he just warns her, like, tell your nigga I'm looking for him and he better show up. But also he got smoked for Siren because uh oh well let me start from the beginning because i'm uh bypassing so the reason lyle was calling him was because she found out she had chlamydia so she tells that nigga come to my place so we can talk so when he gets there she's waiting with a gun she got the gun pulled out on him and he's like you know what's going on what did i do and she, she want to break up. She done with him. Like, nigga, you gave me this disease. How could you? And he like, I don't have shit. So you ain't got shit for me. She's like, you're the only one I have sex with. I went to the clinic. They said that it, that I do have it. And the last person you had sex with was Miracle. So he's like, I don't have it. And you don't have it either. So we gonna go get tested to prove that I don't have it. So they get to another uh, clinic to take the test and at first she was like no nah, just give it to him because i know i got it and he's like no nah, i give it to both of us 
so I can prove to you that I don't have it and you don't have it either. And so she was trying to, you know, stay away from him. He like, no, nah, I don't work too hard. We done got this far. You're not leaving nothing. And lo and behold, come to find out, they both were clean. And at first, Lyle was confused. She was like, you know, could it have cleared up on its own? Could it have went away in a short amount of time? And the nurse or the doctor that was dealing with them told her, no, you must have got a false uh, positive test. Like something just, it it's not sounding right. And so Glock and like look into that so we can see what's going on. So they got cool on that part. Everything's great. But then Lyle goes to the club one day and her club is shut down for investigation because they got a tip that there's money laundering going on in the club. And so when she tells Glockman that, she uh, he's like, the only person that could have done that was Siren. And that makes sense to Lyle because Siren threatened her with that before. So she goes to the club to threaten siren like uh you might as well give up your man uh location write a will for this club and you know because it's about it's about to be over for you and siren trying to act like she don't know that she's like i don't know what you're talking about she's like wait i didn't do it. and lyle just walks away she's like i ain't trying to hear that shit so glockman he knows people in the fbi and the police department so he pulls some strings and they get her club back open fairly quickly and as soon as that's over you know siren is dead uh glockman catches up with rashawn and with toddy and kill them because it's like y'all some bitches and that's over with um oh but Glockman was coming out of his cigar shop one day and runs into an old basketball player. So, you know, he talks to the man. He used to watch him play. He has respect for him, whatever, whatever. So he runs into the man again and the man tells him, you know, I'm your father, like your biological father. And Glockman like, man, I ain't trying to hear that shit, whatever. So he goes and talks to his mama, and lo and behold, the man is telling the truth. So he goes and meets with the basketball player one night at the bar, and it's like, you know, what is, why are you coming around now, and why didn't you get me back then? And he didn't want a child. He actually paid the mama like $2 million dollars to i guess basically take care of him but when she got the money the pimp took the money which i don't understand i'm like girl you got two million dollars why would you not stop hoeing but she was on drugs and she actually loved her pimp and all that type of shit it was crazy but um you know and glockman doesn't let him off the hook it's like but you knew you had a child out there so why would you not come see about me and that man done went off and, you know, got married, had a whole nother life, had a whole nother family. He was actually living good. It almost seemed like as he got older, guilt got to him and he saw how good Glockman was doing. So now it's like, oh, you good and grown. So I can come back and we can have a relationship now. And it's like, no, fuck you. That's how I feel. Okay. I'm going to be completely honest. All, both sets of parents, Glockman parents and uh, the De Leon sisters' parents, fuck off for them. I don't feel no ways about none of them. Because also with, like, Lyle goes over to her Aunt Connie's house one day because Aunt Connie called her over there. And I got some words for her in a minute, too. She calls her over there, like, uh come over to my house and I was like I actually have planned up she's like girl come over here so as soon as she opens the door her mama is sitting on the couch I would have just looked I would have looked at her looked at Akani and turned around and walked out the door because why are you trying to surprise me with this bullshit you know how I feel about this lady and why is this show business to try to get all of them to come together and so the mama flat out tells her like I felt like if I could get to you first, you would convince the other ones to talk to me because you're the strongest. And 
Allah was like, no, I have nothing to say to you. You did this shit the last time, came into our lives, acting as if you were clean and sober and ready to do better. And the first chance you got, you ran off with our fucking money. So no, I have nothing for you. And she leaves out the house. But she does put in a group text like, y'all mama here. She does look clean. She look good. So if y'all want to talk to her, go ahead. And then Connie... Okay, so let's pull over because I'm on Connie now. So then Connie, like later, it was either Troy or Bryce. I can't remember which one. She calls one of them and was like, and when is you coming over? And she's like, come over for what? And she's like, you know that your mama here, so why why you not coming to see her? And basically, like, bullies, I believe it was Troy, bullies Troy to come over and talk to her mama. And it's like, no. I don't understand why you think you have the right to force these girls to interact with this woman i don't give a damn if she was clean going to church filled with the holy spirit if i feel like i don't want to talk to that woman you cannot fucking make me talk to her it's very much given like just let it go and it break no i don't have to and the fact that they did it anyway pissed me off i was just like i really wish that lady would have stayed gone and sh- you know she did not need to come back Never heard from the daddy because fuck the daddy. The daddy ran off and had the sons that he wanted and he was just living it up. And uh, I believe that was in the very first book because when Lyle came over, she heard Connie on the phone with one of them and told her, I don't see why you talk to them anyway. Now, I kind of did have a point. She's like, you know, those are my nephews, just like y'all are my nieces. If anything, have a problem with the daddy, but you can't blame them for being born. So I, I did agree with that. But it's just like, don't don't try to push this family shit on me when I don't want to be family with these people. I don't care that she's clean. Her being clean and what she wants has nothing to do with what I want. And the next time you call me over here trying to surprise me with some shit and ambush me, I'm no longer going to talk to your ass either. So you decide what you want to do, ain't Connie? But anyway uh what else happened so one of the bodyguards has a little crush on lyle but lyle told him you know it'll never be that i don't date my employees and even and john went so far he said i could get another job she's like john no sweetheart like i got a man in my life i got a man that i'm dealing with i'm i'm not doing that with you but he bought her lunch glockman interceded that one time and then another time he bought her flowers to have flowers delivered to uh to the club glockman interceded those because he saw the delivery man like looking for a bell to ring to deliver the flowers and he was like who are those for so the guy's like i can't tell you unless you're the owner glockman like i am so who are they for and because of course her name her name is lyle de leon you could assume that that's a man's name so uh glockman gets the flowers and he like who delivered uh who sent these and the man is like i can't really tell you that they're just supposed to be delivered glockman threatens him and is like now tell me who the fuck these flowers for before you come up missing so he's like uh what's that man's name i think john tavius jartavius something like that and he's like okay cool thank you bye he finds that man like moving some boxes and he like what i tell you didn't i tell you to stop with this little crush you got or the next time i saw you i was gonna put some shit through your chest and he like yeah but no it's not like that it's not even on no romantic type shit so glockman reads the card and like this card says i hope you find these as beautiful as you are so anyway he ended up uh putting three bullets in him I have to call his cleanup crew, but he goes up to Lyle's office and it's like, oh, hey, babe, I'm so happy to see you. Uh, you know, I didn't even know you was here. And Glockman is like, what I tell you? And she's like, what you like? What's the problem? And he t- <laughs> I was like, it's not funny, but it is funny because when he's like, I just had to kill that nigga. And that's my cleanup crew to come clean the body up. She's like, what? You killed him? Who? And he's like, what? Is that the nigga you want to be with? Let me know right now. Like, this man real life called attitude. And she's like, nah, but who the fuck gonna watch the door tonight? Like, nigga, you just killed my worker. And they both laugh about it. I'm like, damn, y'all all cold. That man dead downstairs and y'all laughing about it. Uh, 
But then she also tells the nigga, she like, hurry up and get done with that and come back. Because that just made me horny. So he like, shit, you ain't got to tell me twice and runs out the door. I'm like, y'all are wild. So, uh, what happens after that? Oh, Glockman proposed. So, you know, they, they're getting married. And when he proposed, he said, I'm for real. You ain't gonna have me out here like, uh, Rashawn. We get married. And she's like, no, of course. And I can't wait to change my last name. Because in the first book, when he was flirting with her, he was like, you're not really married. And she would flash her ring. He's like, you didn't even change your last name. Like, you still going by your maiden name. That's how I know you don't really like that nigga. Uh, and her and Mars get along real good. Oh, and then, like, one day, Glockman went over to his baby mama house. And John was there. Cause he had somebody following John trying to get his exact location. And so he asked like, what was the problem? Like, why was he so angry? And why did he, cause John had put his hands on Kelby and John is like, you know, every time I had Ellie or I would pick Ellie up, my mama would be like, that's not your baby. And he thinking like his mama crazy, whatever, but his mama kept saying it. So I'm assuming he stole or I don't want to say stole, but basically stole, got some of her hair, something with her DNA on it, Ellie's DNA, and got a test done. And lo and behold, he is not that baby's father. So after he let John leave, but John was dead anyway, because it's like you hit her and y'all be yelling and fighting in front of my son and that little girl. So it was a done deal for him anyway. But uh, he tells Kelby, this nice-ass life you've been living is done for. And she's like, what? How am I supposed to live? I can't do this by myself. And it's like, girl, you was living good, good as hell. How the fuck you can't do, like, you ain't been saving no money. You ain't been doing nothing. And he's like, I'm selling, I'm either about to sell this house or rent it out to some other people so you cannot stay here. I will put you up in an apartment, pay, I think, the first the last and so, like something to get her on her feet like the first six months or some shit like that so she still had a while to like find a job he was like you can either find a job or find another nigga that's gonna fund your lifestyle but this is done for and so another thing that i want to point out with kelby and with uh kelby alani and uh heavenly lord how i forget her name that quick every time they was dealing with whatever dude they'd be like i bet lyle i bet troy i bet bryce wouldn't do that da, 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 da. and it's like see that's your damn problem you so worried about what somebody else is doing focus on yourself because when she is moved into the apartment glockman goes over there to see mars and she look at a mess like her nails ain't done her hair ain't done she just kind of just looking like real ugh. And she's like, I bet you uh, Lyle isn't walking around like this. And Glockman has to tell her, like, yeah, no. Nah. One, she's my woman, so I wouldn't allow that to happen. But more importantly, she's her own boss. You know, I know that's foreign to you because you so used to being taken care of. But she does that shit on her own. She's not looking for somebody else to do it. So, and, you know, basically keep her name on your mind. Why are you worried about her? So... That's the end of that, and what else happened? I think that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah. So there's an epilogue. It's like a few years later. Everybody's married or engaged. Uh, Lyle had a baby. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, but it was a great read, real great read. I hope you guys pick up this series, this trilogy boss chicks one through three i hope you enjoyed my review and i'll see you back next episode which is also a cheval latrice story uh what is it called snowing in love with you all right peace of us my beautiful people